Today on Computer Tech and More, I am taking a look at two more USB hubs to see if I can find one that will work well with my current work setup for my work at home office. I have the Xinping, however you pronounce it, 11 in 1. So it's got some VJ. We'll go over the boxes. Let me finish that. And we got the 12 in 1 AK Pro. Don't really see any other naming on it. Let's uh, explore the boxes. So, right here on this one, it says it will do 4K, it's USB. The back of it has some product information, but it looks like it's VGA. And we'll have some uh, VGA, Ethernet, two HDMI, two USB 2, which is perfect for like keyboards. And as long as not ultra high um, power draw keyboards for USB 2, meaning if they're RGB'd out of the wazoo, it may not be have sufficient power. But uh, average everyday keyboards for office work should be just fine on USB 2. And uh, of course, USB 2 is also perfectly fine for like uh, wireless mouse uh, dongles and um, wired mice, that kind of thing. Uh, USB 3, a mic, and power delivery. And the 12 in 1 has 1, 2, 3, USB 3.0, Gen 2 speed, so that's 10 gig. Uh, that's for USB-C. I think these might be wired for 5 gig. Uh, dual HDMI, LAN, headphone, USB-C power delivery. So it's got SD card, Ethernet, two HDMIs. So I may still need some adapters for it for my current work at home setup just because I've got some old monitors that are DisplayPort and VGA. But it still should be, uh, assuming it'll just do the display output that I want, should be sufficient. Let's open them up. Alrighty, here is the Xinping. I don't, uh, that's how I'm going to say it. So, here are the three USB A ports. Um, they are wired or whatever circuit board implemented for 10 gig speeds. Note that every time you add a device to it, you're not going to be able to get the true maximum throughput. But uh, they have the maximum potential of 10 gig speeds. We got a USB 2. Again, that is plenty fine. We got the VGA, the Ethernet, two HDMIs, uh, USB 2, and power delivery. Note that your hardware specifications, so in order to do display, your USB will need to be uh, have DisplayPort Alt Mode or, um, yeah, DisplayPort Alt Mode as well as normal USB functionality for everything to work as it should. Otherwise, you may be limited in some way. Uh, my machine is Thunderbolt, which is fully wired for everything. Uh, so it'll have DisplayPort Alt Mode and everything like that. So it should give me full functionality. The question is, um, I guess, what sort of display functionality does it let me cross-combine across everything? So that's going to be what the main test is. And that's why we got the second one to test out uh, to see if there's any changes. So while I'm opening this up, um, I have done, I guess I have a bunch of these on my channel already, where I bought a bunch of them just to test out uh, to see if, if I could get it to work the way I wanted. And one of the main problems was I have a uh, 16 by 10 display, so it's taller than a standard 1080p and it would only operate in um, 1080p mode, which means everything looked warped and stretched. Uh, when I had my second monitor, monitor which is uh, like 16 by 10, um, just under uh, 1080p. So it just didn't like running both of them at the same time. So it may just be a um, scenario where USB is not able to output the resolutions I like but I bought a, and tested out a bunch of these to see if it's really USB or if it's actually just the way the, these hubs are implemented. Okay, so this is the 12 in one. Here are the twin HDMIs. We got the VGA. This, the top is metal. The bottom is plastic. Oh, I didn't say for this one. The top is metal. Actually just feels metal all around except for the sides where it's plastic. It's fine. Uh, very short cables on both of these. It's got some rubber on it. Well, that's pretty cheap sounding. The plastic is shifting next to the metal, so that could be better build quality. 
But uh, as long as like any chips in this uh, that produce heat sink into this metal top, um, it'll stay nice and cool and be able to dissipate heat. Uh, there are the USB ports and it'd be nice if these were labeled. One of these should be power delivery because it said that on the box, but I don't see it on here. I would assume that the second one, but uh, that can be another test that I will do. Uh, speaking of which, let's go straight into testing. All right, we got the hub plugged in. It does have power delivery at the top. I think I missed that earlier. I've got two USB devices. So right now it's just drawing power directly from my computer. So it tests how well it's able to um, take in power. Note that USB 3.1 Gen 2 or Gen 2 can draw up to like 15 watts. So if you have a 65 watt charger, your laptop draws 65 watts, you're going to be reducing your laptop's overall total power. So make sure you're properly set up for whatever your specific needs are. Um, since I don't have a adapter to convert the second HDMI over to um, DisplayPort or VGA, I can only do one. And uh, my monitor's under 1080p. I have no concerns about powering one monitor. So unfortunately, I can't test this with two at the time. If I, if my adapter comes in before uh, this rev this video goes goes up, uh, I'll test it again. Otherwise, we're going to just continue with what I got. And just for the test, because running SSDs under no load doesn't tell us really anything, so we're going to select the two SSDs, their drive letters, and we're going to hit start. Sorry, I am using the camera handheld. And let it come over there. And come over here. And you can see that I've loaded up both SSDs. So one, both of them are 10 gig. So if it was one by itself, it should be running at uh, like eight, 900 megabytes per second. If it's two, they should be running substantially slower. There we go. We're going to test one individually uh, in a moment or after reviewing how this test went. All right, and now we're on to the write speeds. We just finished the read and everything looks more or less in line. Let's test out one drive. All right, so we just got the one running. The other one is not. We're going to just let it do the first test because that'll be the defining feature. Uh, note that when you transfer files within Windows itself, the speeds don't uh, won't necessarily line up unless you use some sort of specialized file manager or file transfer manager that will allow your CPU to use multiple threads as opposed to Windows default single thread operation. Well, it looks like that USB port is only operating at USB 3. Uh, 500 megabyte per, or yeah 500 megabyte per second speeds that's uh, this one I'm gonna stop the test and transfer to this one where it had the yellow or red plug I don't know I said yellow so let's go ahead and give that a try well running that one drive now in the red port we're gonna see that it's operating at 10 gig speeds which is what I would expect it to do Let's stop that test. Come over. This is the one running in USB-C. So again, right there, and we're going to see a little blink of light as that one is the now operating. Sorry, I am doing things handheld, and I'm going to try to hold it steady. And that is exactly what we wanted to see. So this has three 10 gig ports. So one, two, three, and then one, two, five gig ports, which is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with having five gig ports because realistically you're going to be plugging a mouse, keyboard, whatever else into it. And then you've got two, three high speed ones for like storage or something else that really needs the speed. Maybe a high speed network adapter because you don't like the just basic LAN one that's on this. So it gives it the full versatility that we really would expect. Um, it would be nice if all of them were 10 gig, but then it might be more expensive, so have to uh, decide what costs are uh, 
or where where to spend your money on this kind of device. Okay, I now have the Zoom Ping plugged in, but just with just display. So I got the VJ HDMI. Come over here into the display wizard. I have them now set up in. Uh, ignore the other monitor in the back. Oh, over there. Come on, focus. Shift over. So. Auto focus. There we go. So we got a little bit of a problem going on. So my laptop's primary display is just straight up 1080p, which is fine. No issues there. The issue comes when we. So this display right there. So that's that one. Is this 1680 by 1050? Again, old monitors. I'm just trying to get as much life out of because well. Some of them belong to work. This one over here is mine, and it's a 1200p. So it's just a little bit over 1080p. I can't select that resolution. I'm stuck at 1080p, which means everything over here is going to look weird and stretched. Why is the focus, not a focus not working? So everything is going to look weird and stretched. I think this is either a limitation in these or in the USB standard or whatever and it's just incredibly unfortunate because it means that I can't have a one device solution unless I go straight to Thunderbolt because then I can just let it figure itself out because it uh, uses the uh, different type of standard I think so well we're going to finish testing it out because it may work for you in the way you want even though it doesn't work for me in the way i want so let's finish the testing with uh the drive performance all right so while that is loading on this one it is all usb a ports come on my autofocus is really not behaving very well today uh so if uh for whatever reason my ssds that are wired for USB-C don't like operating in USB-A mode, meaning uh, just adapting to USB-A. So, well, there we are. That's the speed we would expect to see uh, from the drive. So that is operating perfectly. We're gonna check. There, you see that? Okay. Come over here, and I'm gonna. I'm doing this one-handed, so I'm gonna unplug this and then plug it into a different port, and we're gonna just check that it's also wired for 10 gig. Okay, we see that it's wired for the other one. And it's just complaining at me. There we are. And run. And now we're looking for roughly that same speed. Remember there was a test to test variance. So uh, anything in that same ballpark would be exactly what we're looking for. And there we have it. Roughly the same speed. So it's operating at 10 gig. So that's great. Um, well, if you're operating two 1080p class displays, this may operate perfectly for you with its current port selection. Um, unfortunately for me, with my beyond 1080p and just straight up under 1080p, you would think that this could handle that load, but it must be something with USB-C, display port throughput. I, I just, I don't know enough about the spec, honestly. Um, so it's just unfortunate it won't work the way I want to, but uh, let's uh, wrap up. So this brings me to my conclusion and probably the end of actually this roundup of videos where I've tested out a whole bunch of these USB devices. So there appears to be a limitation within the USB DisplayPort or DisplayPort Ultimode spec or within the hub itself where it just can't handle two uh, different monitors that are like 1080p or just doesn't like 16 by 10 displays. Uh, one by itself, it does just fine for that uh, 16 by 10 as opposed to 16 by 9. So 16 by 10 is the 1200p, while 16 by 9 is 1080p. So it j they just don't work the way I want them to, leaving me uh, stuck with more plugs than I would like in my computer, uh, just for ease of transition from home office to in office. A little unfortunate but it's not a total game changer. It was a fun experiment for me. Uh, but what do I think about these two specific hubs? Um, well, I think that they're perfectly usable. I haven't talked about price here. The Zimping 
is regularly a for fifty dollar hub right now on Amazon at that time of filming. It's on sale for forty three dollars, and this one is normally sixty dollars. And well, currently it's on sale for forty seven dollars. For so compared to others for around the same price, they're plenty usable, and um, I guess the price is more or less fair. So, all that said, it depends on which one to get, depends on what sort of monitors you are using. If you've got mostly older monitors, 1080p, uh, then the VGA is going to work better for you. I suppose I'd like one that's HMI, DisplayPort, VGA, because then you're pretty well covered. Um, if I were to say which one I personally would get, if assuming they, they worked exactly the way I wanted, I'd probably get this one, the 12-in-1, just because I am a fan of being more forward as opposed to more backward. And by that, I mean USB 2 ports, even though it doesn't technically matter that much. But both of them are seem perfectly good, seem like they're going to would work fairly well in the long run. And with that, I'm going to sign up for this video. Thank you very much for joining me on this journey, and I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.